Hello, my fellow chatterers and book lovers, and anyone else who's popped in because you can't resist a haul or you've got a bit lost. Welcome, everyone. I'm Chatty, and welcome to my channel, Chatty My Chatter, where I'm going to be chatting away madly about my autumn book haul. So grab yourself a drink, and if you want to see a load of books, you're in the right place. So I um, have myself surrounded by all these different books. I'm going to talk through the books that I've earned by healthy decisions and I'm going to talk through um, book boxes and library books and sort of gift-ish ones. So on this channel um, I do not edit my long videos <laughs> because my computer is so 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 old um, so it's all one continuous shot so it could be chaos, there could be unedited rambling that's just what you get. You've got to embrace the waffle. So cheers, everyone. Clink, 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 clink. Um, so I am going to start with what I have been earning um, from October, um, September, October, November. Um, so, it so September uh, wasn't um, such a great month in terms of earning. I think it was kind of a struggle after some holidays to kind of get back into the swing of things. Um, I'm just about now we're at the end of November feeling in the swing of things despite Christmas chaos so uh, it's an ongoing process uh, but yeah I definitely was not making a lot of healthy choices but I did earn two books so I did manage to get there and um, so I earned um, The Haunting of Avalyn Jones which is a middle grade by Phil Hicks I have been really really excited about this book for a long time hearing such great things about it recommending it to people who are asking about sort of like horror -y middle grades um, so this was very spooky and it was just kind of the perfect uh, level for me I'm not a horror reader but I do enjoy sort of like a, a creepy spooky um, and um, so I did I did read this one um, and I really really enjoyed it um, and I, I definitely want to get hold of the other two in this series because I really enjoyed the writing and it just gives off all of those autumn spooky season vibes so this one absolutely perfect for that so I knew I definitely wanted to get it so I could read it this October and I did except it was November but that's fine uh the second book I earned is um the 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemison, which is the first book in the Inheritance trilogy yes the Inheritance trilogy um I have never read N.K. Jemison, but I really really want to so I thought this was a good series to start off. I've watched a few videos of where to start with N.K. Jemisin. Um, I personally feel that I don't want to start with the Broken Earth trilogy because I very much hear people either loving or hating it. And I feel I kind of want to like test the Jemison waters first to see if I am happy in there and kind of want to let myself in gently. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I really hope I like her writing. I'm... I'm, I'm excited um so we'll see so this would be the start of a new series um and I'm excited to have it on my shelf um I also do enjoy the cover for this one um with this sort of in in so when you first look at it it kind of looks like some sort of like tree or cloud behind this kingdom um but when you look closely you can see there's actually an eye there and this is this is hair so it's really intriguing I believe there's kind of a lot of um sort of like gods in Jemison's sort of like fantasy books so I think it's right to see what this one holds. So moving on to October I was a lot more successful in October Um, I have three books to share with you Um, so the first book I got <laughs> out of my uh, secret drawer um, for being healthy was uh, one of the books that I spoke about that I'd got pre-ordered when I was talking about what's in my secret drawer um, so it still counts for all of the read what you own malarkey and that is Foxglove by Adeline Grace so this is the um, the next book in the Belladonna series um, and my plan was I really wanted to reread Bell Belladonna over spooky season enjoying all the gothic vibes um, and then read Foxglove and um, I know that Vidania and Chloe were very keen for this as well and they kind of started ahead of me and kind of read Belladonna that first month and then this one the second but I really wanted to read them back to back um, but I needed to earn Foxglove to do that and they did so I'm really excited it has got these beautiful sprayed edges from Fairy Loot it really matches Belladonna 
fantastically because um, that had kind of like a deeper purple and it had the belladonna flowers whereas this one's got the foxglove flowers um, and I really like the darker cover that the fairy loot editions have so I was very very lucky to be able to get hold of a fairy loot one it wasn't easy it was very popular of, of many of the fairy loot books we were all kind of jammed we were all Daniel and Chloe and I were all like trying to order at the same time we we're like it's not gone through it's still circling I might try again um, but we all got it so that was that was great um, and we have Under the Dust Jacket. I really love Under the Dust Jacket. So Under the Dust Jacket, printed on the hardback, you have got all of these beautiful um, illustrations of fox gloves. And then we have some end pages. So we have Signa here and lots of portraits. And then we have Death over here. Um, so yes, I was very excited to uh, earn this one. So I was able to read it and I... Um, kind of finishing it at the moment um I say kind of because it was so compulsively readable that I needed to read ahead and I should have been asleep and I was like I can't go to bed and not know what happens so I skim read it and I'm now going back and reading it properly so sort of read sort of not read but it's lots of fun um anyway so I was very pleased to haul foxglove um I then hauled um a tangle of spells um i knew i definitely wanted to have this one over spooky season um one because i want to finish the um, pinch of magic series so this is the third book in the pinch of magic series by michelle harrison it's a middle grade fantasy series about the widdisham sisters um and this one has um i was told by Dania that it has kind of like the spooky kind of october halloweeny vibes to it um she was very good she didn't tell me any more than that and yes it does and I really really enjoyed it and I have now read it I managed to read it again over the autumnal spooky season and it was so much fun um so yes continuing with the Winter Sisters was marvellous so yay another haul so I am doing quite a lot of reading what I've hauled at the moment which is great and um, this is one that I haven't read so um this is Blood Water Paint by um Joy McCollum Makalu, yeah, Makalau. I do not know how to pronounce his name. I'm very sorry. Um, and this is um a historical novel in verse about the daughter of a famous painter, I believe. I don't know. It was a long time ago. So basically, with this book, it feels really nice. By the way, the cover is one of those ones that just feels it feels really like smooth. Um, I'm it's very kind of tactile. I'm really enjoying holding this book. Sorry. <laughs> um this was one that I've hauled a long long time ago so for this one um I this was like the first book I hauled where I wasn't sure what I wanted to haul after that because I'd got a lot of the spooky things that I wanted out from under my bed so I kind of wanted a surprise so this was the first book I put on a I put on a little spinning wheel and I made sure I had a mixture of adult YA and um middle grade and a mixture of newer books that I've got under my bed and older books I got on demand. So this is a very much an older one. Um, I was watching Olivia Olivia's Catastrophes channel, and she was talking about novels in verse, and she mentioned this one, and I thought this sounded brilliant. Um, I think it's got um feminist themes in here. Um, I love novels in verse. Um, Olivia was the way Olivia was talking about it made me really really want to pick it up so we did and finally it is on my shelf so I may well be able to pick it up and read it at some point so we will see when that is and I'm very excited to do so um, I don't know if it tells oh 1610 yeah so yeah it's set in set in 1610 in Rome so there we go definitely historical awesome <laughs> glad I've cleared that up for myself all of these books I will be linking their story graph um story graph links so you can go and see an actual synopsis instead of my rambling which you may prefer because uh, the rambles are here rambly 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 sorry talking a lot need a tea break okay on to November so in November, I once again deployed my little spinning wheel. So all of the books in November now, I used um, the wheel to spin to choose what I was going to be hauling. And I was very excited when this one came up because I was really hoping that I could put it into my December TBR. And it is Sophie Anderson's The Castle of Tangled Magic 
This is, again, a middle grade. It is a Fla Slavic folk tale. Um, I loved Sophie Anderson's um, other two books I read, which is um, House with Chicken Legs and uh, The Girl Who Speaks Bear. I'm reading all of her works in um, publication order. I don't necessarily know if you need to, but I know there are certain kind of crossovers with characters, so I wanted to do it that way. Um, I've heard amazing things about this book from Vidanya. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to have another Sophie Anderson to read over the wintry months. I really wanted this nice cozy read for Christmassy time. So very excited to afford this. So I have the opportunity to read it. And then spinning again, it was very kind to me and gave me what um, I felt I wanted. I was excited for many books. Um, but if I didn't get this one, I felt it would push me more to be more healthy. But I did get this one. So I'm very excited to have hauled. A Storm of Sisters, which is the fourth and final um, Pinch of Magic series book uh, about the Wintersham Sisters. And this one has got an icy, wintry setting. So it's absolutely perfect. One, it means I get to finish the series. Two, I get to have a wintry read. So I definitely wanted this one out because I really want to read it. Um, fa if failing December, definitely in January, but hopefully in December. Um, and it's got these lovely ice grease braid edges as well because I ordered it when it came out and I can still get the edges. So yay! Um, so it has been under my bed for quite a while now. <laughs> and I finally have my hands on it, so I'm very excited. So yeah, even though the November ones I haven't yet read, um, there's definitely ones that are going to be, that are on my December TBR kind of pile of possibilities wish listy thing. Um, so I am definitely kind of reading the books that I'm calling at the moment. Now the final one I haven't yet opened because again I span my wheel to see what it was and this one was buried more in the drawer I didn't have an opportunity to kind of delve in and get it out until just now for this video but I'm very excited to get it out because I haven't fully got it out it's still in its waterstone packaging I think I, I opened it so I could show you um when I did my what's under my bed um video if you're not sure what that is um i've mentioned it a few times and haven't done anything else with it but i will link it here so if you are not sure what i'm talking about i basically explained that i have this drawer and in this drawer are books that i have bought but are not on my shelves i'm not allowed to read them i'm not allowed to touch them until i do healthy things and earn them so if you want to hear all about that you can go and look at those um so yeah so this is my i'm like realize i'm flashing my address around but i'm i don't think anyone actually cares that much um Yes, so I have all, so um, I ordered this. This was um, once I finished my Read What You Own challenge. I basically let myself loose on the Waterstone website and ordered, bought a few things and um, got some pre orders in that I've been looking forward to, that I've been anticipating for the year, uh, especially ones where they were looking very beautiful. And um, so this one, I haven't taken it out yet. So it's the first time I'm taking it out. And it just makes it that much more exciting. Like it's a proper like gift. It looks gorgeous. Ah, come on, out you come. Here it is. This is The Sun and the Void by Gabriella Romero La Cruz. Um, so this is a fantasy. Um, it is, um, I think it's a Latinx fantasy. Um, so it's inspired, I'm not entirely sure, just, I don't think it says. Uh, no, doesn't say there, does it say here? Um, so the author is Venezuelan. Um, so I'm very excited to read it, to hear about some, I think there's like some um, South American mythology in here. Um, so possibly some Venezuelan like culture folklore in here. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but hearing about the premise, I got very, very excited. Um, we have these lovely dark, it, you can't tell on the camera so well. Um, but it's purple, so it always kind of looks more black, but it's actually, um, it's got purple edges and it's purple and white on the cover. Um, and I love the title in this picture of the sun and we've got gold foiling all over it. Um, and it just looks so pretty and I'm so excited for it. And it's a hardback. Um, yep, yeah, it's got some purple. Oh, sorry, I just turned, <laughs> I just took the book cover off. Okay, let me show you. So <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be doing this uh, on here. We've just, I've warned you about the waffle. You know what to expect. So we've got this very, very dark, it looks almost nasy purple end pages, but then I flicked off the cover. Look at the naked hardback. We have gold foiling on the hardback. We've got all sorts of like flowers and vines. 
we've got the top bit kind of like in blocks of gold with the flowers left in the purple and then the bottom bit um it's the flowers are in gold so it's kind of good and that color there is a special word for it but i can't remember what it is it's what flipped over with the color and then on the spine we again have this like so we're in this like sun it almost like kind of like compass sundial circle we've got these kind of like crystallized um what's that word where it's kind of like long and thin <sighs> there's there's a word the words are failing me today and um, anyway on the spine in that um, little sundown we've got a picture of those on there as well and then the back is plain purple but i wasn't i wasn't expecting it to be under the dust jacket i always like to look and see if there is something pretty on, on the on the naked hardback so it's always an absolute treat when you do get that so very excited for this so i'm just probably going to be admiring it on my shelves for a long time um but um yes we'll be picking it up when i need an adult fantasy so yay okay right i think that's enough uh, gushing of those books um i'm going to talk about the books that i've borrowed and got from the library now so what so the first one that i have borrowed um is from mum um so i went to visit my parents when did we go possibly October time yeah it was it was October went for the weekend in October yes <laughs> and while I was there um I just felt like you know what? I'm really in the mood for reading um Wilder Than Midnight I really wanted to read it when I saw it in a bookshop and then mum told me she got it and I heard brilliant things I also heard brilliant things again from Vidania Silver Scribe I'm saying her name a lot in this video um she does have a booktube channel so you should go and check it out she is such a lovely magical person she's not posted recently because she's got a lot of life stuff going on but you can definitely enjoy her backlog she's a lot of fun um, so Wilder, Mid Mid Wilder Than Midnight by Kerry Burnell is a middle grade fantasy and um, it features three um, girls and so we hear about all their different stories. Um, we have um, disability, physical disability representation here, um, its own voice author. Um, the author um, was born with um, part of her arm, so like part of her fore forearm and hand um, missing. Um, so one of the characters has that um, and it just looks like a really fun kind of fairy tale into the woods kind of story. And I just felt like I'm just really in the mood for that. I definitely want to be reading that over the wintry period. So I borrowed it. Um, we've got purple sprayed edges. We have a map under the dust, uh, not dust jacket, it hasn't got a dust jacket, and the flap. We've got a map. Um, so yes, very keen to be reading this one soon, hence why I borrowed it. Um, library books, uh, I've not, I think I've been kind of over ambitious and haven't really thought it all through. So I have two library books that I have started reading um, and I may have to take them back without finishing them. Um, so first of all, weirdly, I've both got my tasseled metal bookmarks in both these books, which is entertaining. Um, I have Trigger Warning by Neil Gaiman. So... If I wasn't doing my Chatties Challenge and wanting to give my full receipts on this book, give you my full thoughts and opinions um, and judge it amongst others, um, I would probably not finish this. I would probably DNF this just because it is not my reading taste. It's very good. Um, but one, I don't like short stories. Two, I'm not really into horror. So this is not a great mix for me. But it did win, I can't remember what year, um, the um, Goodreads Choice Awards for Fantasy. And I have been reading, when I started this, it was the last seven years, but that was two years ago. So it's a very slow process of me <laughs> managing this challenge. Um, so I might have to get it out of the library again because right now it is so not a priority, <laughs> sadly. Um, and another one for a very, very different reason, um, I may be taking back to the library um, without finishing. Um, is The Secret of Haven Point by Lizette Alton. I am really enjoying this. I did. I haven't got very far. I've only um, four chapters in, but I'm enjoying the writing style. I'm enjoying the plot. I'm enjoying the characters. I'm very intrigued. However, um, this is set by the sea with a lighthouse and mermaids, and it feels sort of more summery. And I started reading this at the end of September, and if I could have finished it in September then I would definitely 
have read it but we got to October and I was involved in four different readathons I really wanted to be reading more spooky books so I kind of put this on the shelf to kind of read other ones because when I read this I really want to give it my full time and attention because I really feel I'm going to love it I'm very excited about it I think the premise sounds brilliant and I'm enjoying what I've read so far so I want it to have its real moment to shine so I haven't picked it up since September and I don't think I can keep renewing it I think I am going to have to give it back in but if I get it out again then that's good for the author that the uh, library has uh, had has more people wanting the book um I may end up getting hold of a physical copy myself we will see I don't know um and then I have got two here that I got for um Black Arena Thumb so I have um Fable House by E.L. Norrie which I have read um and once I've done my um November stats it will be going back to the library um so this is a middle grade um middle grade fantasy I wasn't sure if it was a mystery if it was going to be spooky it has sort of spooky elements but I'd say it's more kind of like portal fantasy slash magical realism um and but it has kind of like spookyish vibes and not so much as a mystery as I thought there was going to be um but it still it still worked it still worked for the prompts that I needed so um that's good um and her name is night um by yasmin ango i really want to read this i heard nicole from dusty book sniffer talking about how good this was um i ha i've seen it a few times in my library and i've been meaning to pick it up um and i did pick it up for black Aweenathon and i felt ready to read it but there was not enough days in that month i had a load of buddy reads so i put buddy reads first um and it just kind of hasn't happened and um, i'm also doing the read what you own challenge and library books do not count so it just massively slipped down the list and i just don't think it's its time so i will get it out again i'm not sure when um but i definitely do want to read this okay i think we are on to i'm going to talk about books that are sort of sort of gifts um so <laughs> the sort of gifts um just before I started the Read What You Own challenge, I went into a charity shop to drop off a load of books I was unhauling. And in the charity shop, I saw things that I could not walk away from. Um, and that was Jade War and Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. I have heard such amazing things about the Greenbone Saga. Um, it is fantasy. It's fantasy with Japanese mafia um and I really really want to read it it sounds awesome um I think it's kind of generational um but just hearing people talk about it I'm just so keen to read it um but I didn't have any of the books so I, I so I'm, my series focus are kind of on ones where I've, I've at least got one of the book is kind of what I'm thinking of, of starting next so this was not on my radar but when I go to charity shops I do not expect to find books that I'm really really excited about um, it's more, I might get lucky with a middle grade or it might be the more of a contemporary book or a classic book that I see in there. I don't expect to find fantasy in there. So seeing this was amazing and they're in really nice condition and they were two pounds each. And I would have at some point paid bookshop prices. So these would have been like 10 pounds. So I needed to do them and I have given myself a free pass. If I go into a bookshop and I see Jade City, because I don't have that one, um, I would allow myself to buy that um, without feeling bad for the Read What You Won't Challenge. <laughs> but I haven't. Um, I haven't been going into a bookshop, to be fair, because temptation. Um, but yes, so excited to have got these. And I, I just put them straight on my shelves because I was counting the books anyway. I was like, there's not even any room under my bed. Um, I got rid of some books, there was space on my shelf. Being as I don't have the uh, Jade, Jade City, they just kind of sit under my bed um, for a long time. So I kind of felt that I'll just find Jade, Jade City somehow and I will start reading the series. So that's kind of like a gift. Like it were pre, a pre-read what you own little book splurge. Uh, the next one 
um, Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe was getting rid of, um, she was unhauling some um, non-fiction um, and she very kindly um, asked if I would like one and she sent me My Lady Parts by Dune McKin... Mc Here we go, I'm going to try, I'm going to butcher another name now. McKinchin. I'm going with McKinchin. Apologies if that is not how you say it. Um, and this is all a kind of like about the perceived um, character and the part that a woman can play. So this is um, kind of about Dune reflecting on like her acting career and things she was offered and kind of um, feminism. So it just sounds really, really interesting. Um, and we'll be joining my pile of feminist nonfiction that um, I have not yet finished a book from. Uh, so I have got two other books, um, um, feminist nonfiction books, and I still haven't read them. So um, it's going to join those and it will at some point get read. So thank you very much, Livia, for sending that to me. Um, yeah, I have definitely discovered that I am very happy to read nonfiction in the kind of beginning of the year. But like once we got to September, we went past, once we went past September, I suddenly just did not feel like I had a nonfiction audiobook and I just wasn't didn't want to listen to it. I just felt like my brain just didn't want information right now. It doesn't want to be thinking about facts. It wants to escape to storylands um, and have emotional tie-ins um, and cosy times. Um, so I wanted gripping plots, characters, cosy times, emotions, and um, all of that. So non-fiction, I think I will be picking up again more um, once we start heading into spring. Because I've discovered I'm a massively seasonal reader um, and uh, I'm fine with that. That is okay. I think this tea is cold now. It's cold now, so we're done. Done with the tea. Unless I pause and go and warm it up. But I've only got one pile left, so I think I'm just going to crack on. So the final one to talk about are my book boxes. So I get two. Um, I do the Shelter Book Club box. <laughs> which I find funny calling a box it's not a box it's an envelope you get a book in the, you get a book in the post um so I did briefly mention this in um before I was when I was doing my physical TBR it just came in um so this counts for the read what you own challenge because it just came in uh before I started so it made up the numbers in my physical TBR so this is the selfless act of breathing by JJ Bowler um this is definitely going to be a challenge book for me. It is not the kind of genre that I usually go for. Um, it sounds like it's going to be kind of like quite reflective, sort of like an emotional slice of life-ish style. Um, but it is about identity. I do enjoy stories about identity. I am definitely going to give it a go. I might surprise myself. But I don't feel that this is going to be a match for me. But we will see. We will see um, where we go. Um, the second one is also slightly out of my comfort zone, but it's one that I knew. So this is the um, shelter box one they sent out most recently. So it will not fit into the Read What You Own challenge. So if I read it, it would not count because it's not been clocked on my physical TBR. Um, but it is Mexican Gothic by um, Sylvia Maria Garcia. I was not expecting to open a shelter box parcel and found a book that I recognised that was, uh, you know, that, that hits, you know, fantasy notes. Um, so I think this is more of a horror or like a cross between horror and fantasy. Um, so it's like a gothic, I think it's a gothic horror fantasy. So I might be okay with it if it's more on that kind of creepy side. Um, but when it starts to go more into kind of like freaking me out, body horroriness, that might be where I need to draw the line. So I'm not sure what it's going to be. So again, it's another pushing me out of my comfort zone. When I got this, I was quite keen to kind of join the read along at the time with the shelter box book club. Um, but I was like, I've got too many things. It's just not going to work. Um, but I think it would have been helpful for buddy reading um and it would have been nice to have actually kind of seen the live show as it as it takes part but it's fine <laughs> I, I i can watch in retrospect it will be fine um 
So maybe I will be picking this up next year around spooky season. Maybe I'll surprise myself and just feel like picking it up. I don't know. It may work for me and I'll surprise myself even more. Um, but I'm definitely keen to try it because I hear really, really good things about it. Um, so we'll see. Okay, the next two I have are fairy loot books. Um, and again, these do not count as part of um, Read What You Own because I got them after I started the challenge. So the first one I have is the September book, but I didn't get it till October. Um, so this is If I Have to Be Haunted by Miranda Sun. And look at the cover. It's covered in kind of like leaves and butterflies. And we've got sort of like a teal and pinky purple colours. And it's just very, very pretty. Um, on the back, we've got a tagline, I'll haunt you for the rest of your life you wouldn't dare try me um so i think this is very much a um fantasy romance supernatural um ghost story i think it's a love ghost story um okay so it's also got like a, it also mentions about having like a mother, mother and daughter kind of relationship as well in here that's explored which i always enjoy um so it feels like a kind of a light-hearted read um so i feel it'll kind of like be a nice palette cleanser sort of later on so it sounds like it could be really really cute we will see um but i just love these edges look at these sprayed edges with this gorgeous leaf pattern and again we've got teals pinks oranges and purples and it just looks beautiful um under the dust jacket it is also equally gorgeous in terms of the artwork you just move all the extra bits that i've got inside it so the end pages are also beautiful i love this leaf design on here and we've got some stars behind it um the back is also the same here um, and then the hard cover we have got um our protagonist and um her ghostly love interest here um, and then on the back, we've got these trees, which look really beautiful, very autumnal, when the river is shiny, look. Um, and it's all in these lovely orangey colours, so it's very, very pretty. I really hope I like this book because it is a really gorgeous one. I hadn't heard of it at all. Oh, there's an alternative cover as well. So I'm not going to use the alternative cover, but the artwork is very pretty. There we go. So yeah, I really, really hope that I uh, I enjoy that one because the book is gorgeous. There we go. Um, and so now I have the October one, which I was very excited about because it was definitely giving me kind of like fairy tale vibes that we were going to be getting from sort of like the spoiler cards and, and um, things that were kind of coming up. And it definitely is. So this is what we got for October. It is The Forest Grim by Catherine Purdle. Um, and there is some sort of Red Riding Hood thing going on here. Look, we've got the trees. We have got Little Red Riding Hood here. And we've got this uh, wolf that looks a little bit like a kind of like <laughs> Grim Reaper dog kind of like... Um, what is the name? Cerberus. A uh, kind of Cerberus, but with just the one head kind of uh, feeling to this uh, to this wolf here. Um, but the most gorgeous thing is these stenciled edges. We have got Red Riding Hood right at the bottom. We've got this misty kind of foresty pine things. We've got a wolf and then we've got the dark starry night sky. And it is just beautiful. And under the dust jacket is equally as fun. We have... It looks like such an old storybook look. So we've got this kind of um, wood, it's kind of this brown and the way we've got the silver foiling on the top, it looks like it's a piece of wood. Um, and then we've got ornate silver kind of like, it looks like the metalwork on it. And there's the spine with more of the same. And then on the back here we have some toadstools. Who doesn't love toadstools? So that is very exciting. Oh, I didn't show you the back cover here. We've got the tagline on this one of Tell me again, Grandmere, the story of how I die. 
and then we've got Red Riding Hood <clears throat> in the forest and we've got this really fun artwork where the trees and kind of the shapes of them are starting to have kind of like you kind of see like wolfy outlines around them as well which is really cool there's also an alternative cover on this one as well um it i, I like it as an as an alternative but again i wouldn't be using that one because i like the foresty feeling but this one it's kind of got that brown kind of woodcut feel to it like the uh the naked hardback has so it's very kind of creepy red riding hood <laughs> so this also looks really fun so um, we'll see, oh, on the end pages, we have um, Red Riding Hood going through the forest. And we have whoever this character is here. Could be a love interest, I don't know. Um, I really love the forest of the artwork on these. Um, but the character art looks too pretty. And um, they look, just look very kind of clean. <laughs> they look too clean and pretty. Um, for my personal taste but um there we go so yeah excited for that one as well and i haven't got the november um fairy loot nor will i be getting the december one because i've just paused it for a couple of months um just because i can um and i'll be picking it up again in january um just i have so many like it, it's a YA fantasy thing and i love the books i think they're beautiful um but I thought I needed just a little, not so many, <laughs> but I, I can't, but I still love having the surprise. And there's some absolute gems that I wouldn't have picked up if I didn't get this book box. And they are just such gorgeous works of art that I still love it and want to keep going. But I just need a little, little pause, just pause for a moment. There we go. That is all of my autumn haul. Um, do let me know um, what have been some exciting books that you have added to your collection, whether that is on Kindle or physical books, um, or if you have recently been getting things out of the library, I would really love to know. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited to be getting, uh, getting stuck into some of these and be starting uh, my December reads very soon. Thank you so much for watching and um, feel free to comment on any of the books. That would be really nice because I do love a chat. Happy reading, everyone.